Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the rear shocks on a C5 Corvette. Hey, it's Melissa from North Alabama with my 01 C5 Corvette. Thanks for tuning in to the Corvette channel. Hi everybody, just before we jump into the video I just wanted to give you a little heads up that uh, the original uh, intro that I had done that introduces uh, my buddy Dan Pickle uh, he's part of our Corvette Club, the Just for Corvettes Club in Sacramento, California, and he, it's his C5 that we're going to be doing the shocks on. And he volunteered to do the work and just let me film this uh, so we could put it up on uh, on the channel. So um, that piece of film just didn't, didn't work. Um, so I'm just going ahead and give you that information ahead of time, and now we're going to go ahead and jump into the video. All right, what we're looking at here, we've got a 24 millimeter bolt right here. Then we have two 13 millimeter bolts right up here in here. Those are the only thing that, things that need to come out. All right, so we gotta take this 24 millimeter nut off the back. All right, now for the bolt, what we're gonna do, if you have a bottle jack that works or you could use the full jack, just gonna bring it in right underneath the A-arm. There we go. And you're just bringing it up enough to relieve the tension off that bolt. and you should be able to wiggle it out. And there we go. Okay. And then you've got two upper bolts, right? Yep, you have two 13 millimeter bolts up on top. And to be quite honest, not a huge fan of universals, but this is one place where it does actually help a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. And what you're doing is you're unbolting this plate and then the whole shock assembly will come out. All right, now the bolt in the back is kind of a pain to get to. You're using a long extension and a wobble at the end, right? Yeah. But the kicker is trying to have room for the ratchet to spin if I can get the ratchet onto the extension. There we go. Obviously you guys want to be careful with this because it's a good way of taking the skin right off your knuckle. Yeah. Once it breaks free, then it's fairly easy. All 
Uh, now that we've got this, I mean, the shock is ready to come out. Actually, wow. The shock is really ready to come out. <laughs> <laughs> On the other. Like but, uh, pretty well shot, but this we'll, side we'll reverse, we'll do the reverse here and we'll show you with the, with the zip tie in place on the other shock. Um, so you can see the, how you would do it, but you would zip tie it and then compress it. And then that way you won't have to fight it. But you can see here that there's, um, um the plate that, uh, that Dan was talking about this plate. Normally you would take off and you just unscrew that bolt right there that he's holding on to and you would take that off and you would put the new shock and it's on that plate and then you would just reverse it. Um, the shocks that he has uh, was a brand new set of shocks from a, uh, another C5 um, that um, they just hadn't gotten used and so uh, we were lucky enough to get those so they already had the brackets on them so um, we don't have to take those off on these, but literally that's all you would do is take that, that nut loose and um, you know keep all of the hardware and just reverse it back off. Old shock that we just took off. Here's the new shock that we're going to be putting on. And as you can see, this one's already uh, compressed down and held in by wire. So we can get it in there, get it seated, cut the wire off, and then it'll compress up into the... Uh, socket where this plate bolts onto. Um, like I said before, we got lucky on this one. This came right out. But typically what you do is you need to compress this and use either zip ties up here, down here, then use zip ties to compress it. Or something like this, use wire to compress it. But we got lucky and this one's already compressed. We didn't have to do that to get this in out. All right. So we still have the jack under here. We're gonna have to pull the jack out anyways so that we have room to get the shock in. We're gonna pull it out now. And we'll, what works best is when you get the shock in place here, you're going to sit there and put the bolt in now while there's no tension on the shock at all. And that way the bolt will just slide right in, no problem. Just get the nut started just for, to make it easier. Now we're going to cut that wire. Now, of course, one thing that you got to make sure of is if you're using wire or zip tie or whatever, that make sure they get it completely out of here. Put you bolt the whole thing up. All right. Let's see. Now this side is sitting a little bit lower. It's not fully going into the uh, spot for the plate, so we're just gonna jack it up a little bit. So we can get those 13 millimeter bolts in there. There we go. So if you guys have noticed that the best way of being able to do this is to be able to have two two jacks if you if you only have one jack then you're gonna you have to make darn sure that you've got um, that you've got some uh, jack stands which we do but we're still utilizing two different jacks one to hold the car and one to be able to maneuver the suspension around so we can take the pressure off of the bolts and get them lined up real easy if you don't have it, it can be a real nightmare. You're dealing with the springs and um, you're trying to get the shock to align exactly the way you want it, and it's just it isn't just isn't going to play nice. So having a jack to be able to manipulate things just makes it just so much nicer. All right.
All right, and that's all in there. We have one more bolt to tighten up. And that's this 14 millimeter down here. Put the tire back on and we're good to go. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell so you'll be notified of our next uploads. Thanks for watching and you have a great night. Hi, I'm Jennifer and you're watching the Corvette channel.